Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It has been said that everyone and everything has its price. Everything and everyone can be bought, can be had, if the price is right. And those of us who spent time in the real world know that these statements aren't referring to basic consumer activity, the buying and selling of goods. Rather, we're talking about a person's convictions, their principles, their loyalties, even their faith. And whether or not we want to admit it, each of these things has a price. Power Fame, authority, security, belonging, and yes, wealth. These are just a few of the things that can and do act as currency in these ugly little exchanges that take place each day. I know that some of you gathered here today are thinking that you've never behaved in such a despicable manner. Maybe those other people are crooked. They steal and they deal in this way, but... But I'm better than that. I haven't sold out. I'm not for sale. But the wise among us know and understand the depth of this reality. And they're not going to entertain any arrogance like that or foolish thinking, spouting off that they've never sold out to anything in their life. Truth be told, we've all engaged in this sinful game of let's make a deal. Behavior of a greater or a lesser degree. And if we're really honest with ourselves, we know that we've sold out a time or two by keeping our mouths shut, or wrongly going along with the crowd simply because we didn't want to make waves. We didn't want to offend anyone. We didn't want them to target us. And of course, we can all relate to that notion of betraying our principles for the sake of keeping the peace. And this happens in churches all the time. Many a sin is left to fester, and to grow, because, because we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And more than that, no one wants to be accused of judging anyone else. Indeed, even pastors are guilty of selling out in this way. Pastor, you shouldn't talk about this or that because it might upset someone. My homiletics professor used to say, if we only preach on sins that nobody commits, we wouldn't have anything to say. But there's a corollary to that. If we only preach on the sins that those other people commit, we run headlong into the realm of the Pharisees. The truth is that the full law gospel preaching of God's word offends. It does cause division, and that is the nature of the cross. It's a stumbling block to some, folly to others. But it always causes division. There is, of course, my personal favorite that's associated with church. And we're all guilty of this from time to time. Pastors, parishioners, everyone. We should be doing what such and such a church down the street, across the country, back in another time, did. And why? Because they were, or they are, successful. They've got more people, more money, more kids, more activities. The question is, what is your price? Tragically, the currency in all of these little transactions turns out to be faithfulness to God's word and God's sacrament. When you get down to it, that's exactly and invariably what's always 
the currency, what's always at stake is faithfulness. And that's exactly what Jesus was talking about in the Gospel lesson this morning. What can a man give in exchange for his life? Think about that. Even your salvation has a price. Some of you might be saying, now hold on. That's a rhetorical question, Pastor. The the answer is nothing. Man can't give anything in exchange for his life and salvation with God. Salvation doesn't have a price. It is free. And you're absolutely right in the sense that we... We don't have to pay anything. Our salvation is absolutely free and totally undeserved. We've done nothing to earn it. We've done nothing to merit it. And yet God gives it to us graciously in the midst of our sin and in spite of our sin. Like it or not, salvation does have a price tag. Sadly, our sinful human nature that likes to feel wanted, that likes to feel important, has a way of constantly butting in and deceiving us into believing that we should, or, or at least we could try to pick up the tab, maybe even just a little bit. Not all of it, but some, right? How many times have you heard the sacraments, baptisms, Holy Communion, referred to as something something I do to show God that I love Him. That's actually kind of funny. Because God says these are absolutely free gifts that He gives to us for our complete forgiveness of sins and for our eternal salvation. And yet somehow we twist and we turn and we make this into a heavenly currency of our own little salvation transaction. Now, even though Lutherans are very sacramental, we're always talking about grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. We aren't immune to this either. Ask yourself how many times you've questioned God when things go wrong in your life. Why? Why, God, why is this happening to me. I've done this and that with my life. I've put so much in the offering plate every week. I go every week. All I've done is is to be a good person. At least I'm better than some. Isn't that worth something? I'm sorry, but when it comes to your forgiveness, your salvation, no. God doesn't deal in that currency no matter how important or how famous you are or how much bogus money you can present to him. My friends, despite the fact that we can offer God nothing in exchange for forgiveness and salvation, I do say that it still comes with a price tag. Yes, we cannot offer anything in exchange for this precious gift, but Jesus is very clear in telling us that we are completely unable to put up the currency to cover this cost. In fact, we don't even possess this currency. We simply cannot pay. And someone else had to pick up the tab. Jesus Christ willingly, obediently, happily for what it would accomplish, laid down his own life is the currency in this divine transaction. In fact, that's the only currency that our Heavenly Father would or could accept for such a debt. Salvation comes with a very high price, and the cost of it is the lifeblood of God Himself. The lifeblood that Jesus paid for you, for me, and for the whole world. That's how great our sin really is. It requires the death of God to make things right. 
Christ is our hope and our salvation. And that is exactly what we show the devil when he confronts us with doubts, with temptations, when he says, have you done enough? Isn't there more that you need to do? And so we say with Christ, get behind me, Satan. Christ has done it, and he said so from the cross on Good Friday. It is finished. So what can man offer in exchange for his life? Nothing. Nothing but the all-redeeming cross of Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, Christian, may this life-saving, this life-giving, blood-soaked cross of Jesus Christ be your life, your hope, and your currency as you meet and make deals amongst the world full of people that your Lord and Savior willingly paid the ultimate price of redemption with his own life blood. May his words always be upon our mind, our lips, our hearts, and our hands. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.